Welcome to the lesson 7 of industrial instrumentation. In this lesson basically we will discuss the thermistor. As you know the thermistor is a, uh, a temperature uh, sensitive device. I mean if you increase the temperature its resistance decreases and by using this property uh, mainly it is used as a temperature sensor, but it has many other applications in electronic circuits that we will discuss one by one. Now, contents of this lesson is its resistance temperature relationship or characteristics, composition of a thermistor because it is a semiconductor material. So, you have to look at what are the compositions and how it is made, manufacturing process how actually thermistor is made and thermistor in Wheatstone B, this is very important, we will show that uh, Wheatstone B is used to uh, take an unbalanced voltage which is calibrated in terms of temperature and its linearity of operations. We will also see the thermistors in a uh, potentiometer circuit, either you can use it in a Wheatstone B or in a potentiometer circuit we will see both, we will analyze both and what is the linearity of operation. Thermistor is a very non-linear sensor, so we will I mean, look at all these things. At the end of this lesson, the viewer will know thermistor, it is all its characteristics, it is used in the, how it is used in the electronic circuit, what are the signal conditioning circuitry associated with the thermistor along with its applications as a temperature measuring element. This is the main application, but we will uh, touch some of the um, uh, applications even though it is not within the purview of the industrial instrumentation like in the power supply circuits, in the wind bridge oscillator circuits, there are some uses of thermistor in those applications also. As I said other applications of thermistor. Now, a thermistor it is a temperature sensitive resistors. As you know the all the resistors are temperature sensitive if you increase the temperature, normally if you increase the temperature resistance increases. However, unlike metals it shows a decrease in resistance value with the increase in temperature. These are the unique features which we have in the thermistor which no other I mean uh, resistors have this type of property. Okay, this is inverse, I mean it is resistance is not increasing with the increase of temperature, resistance decreases with the increase of temperature. Rather I should, uh, I mean if I draw it, it will look like the characteristics will look like, like this. You see that suppose if I draw here, temperature here and resistance here. The relationship is exponential like this one, clear? This is the temperature versus resistance relationship of a thermistor. It is made of oxides of nickel, cobalt or manganese and sulphides of iron, aluminum or copper. The resistance temperature relationship can be expressed as R equal to R naught exponential to the power 1 by T minus 1 by T naught. What are those legends? R equal to the resistance of the thermistor at T Kelvin, R0 is the resistance of the thermistor at T naught Kelvin and beta is the material constant that ranges from 3000 to 5000 Kelvin. In fact, actually, I am sorry, there is a mistake. So, it will be a, it will be beta multiplied by this. So, beta multiplied by 1 by T minus 1 by T naught. This is the thermistor because this is unitless quantity that should be. So, beta is a material constant that ranges from 3000 to 5000 Kelvin. Now, uh, one thing is very interesting you see that as the value of beta always we desire that the value of beta is it's not very difficult to find the value of beta because I can measure the temperature, I can measure the resistance at two known temperature. So, obviously I, from that I can find value of beta. 
Now, as the beta is higher, always people prefer to beta to be beta should be higher. The reason is that if the beta is higher, you will see that if the beta is higher, the relationship will be sharper and sharper. That means beta increases this direction. beta increases in this direction. As you can see if the beta increases sensitivity that means this temperature versus resistance relationship sensitivity of the thermistor also increases that means for the same rise of temperatures I will get higher decrease of resistance. So, that is always an advantage for making any instrument that the instrument should be more and more sensitive clear. I should go back as I told you this should be uh, beta should be multiplied right. The sensitivity S of a thermistor is given by S equal to delta R by R by delta T if you can derive then you I will get minus beta by T square. If beta for an example if beta is equal to 4000 Kelvin and T is 298 Kelvin S will find the S value of S will be equal to minus 0 0.045 per Kelvin and this is much higher than the sensitivity of platinum RTD. Platinum RTD is not that this sensitive because both are resistance resistive sensors as you know RTD means is basically resistance temperature detector and I mean if you look at the sensitivity of the RTD it is much higher. So, it helps to measure the very small difference of temperature. Now, manufacturing process if you look at the two or more semiconductor powder are mixed with a binder to form a slurry. Small drops of the slurry are formed over the lead wires dried and put in a sintering furnace. During sintering the metallic oxides shrunk onto the lead wires and form the electrical connection. The beads are then sealed by coating it by glass. It looks like this actually. So, two wires will take I should draw it here. I should draw it here. So, two wires are there which is coming out. So, these slurries are dropped on this one. Okay. Now, it put on a sintering furnace. So, I will get a bead like this one. Right. So, what will happen? So, this will sorry this again I will draw it here. Okay. Let me erase first. So, I can so slurries are dropped on this one. So, it is put on a sintering furnace. Now, if you put in a sintering furnace what will happen you know it will um, it will shrink and this shrinking process will make the very good electrical connections. Now, please note that the thermistors uh, are very sensitive to the since it is a semiconductor uh, device it is sensitive to moisture also. So, there should be some protection so that it will not deteriorate with the moisture performance totally deteriorate with the moisture right. The glass coating improves the stability by eliminating the water absorption. So, obviously, if you make a glass coating so water cannot be absorbed there. The typical size of a thermistor it is 0 0.125 millimeter to 1.5 millimeter. As in usually we compare the three basic temperature sensor one is thermocouple then RTD then thermistor. 
you will find that the thermistor has the smallest size. I mean some of the size is so small it is sometimes very difficult to even look at the naked eye. It can be made so small. Now making this small and um, there are that there, there are two advantages of making a, such a small size. Even though you have to put on glass coating and all these things, first of all its time constant of the thermistor is very, very small. If you compare to thermocouple and RTD, the time constant of the thermistor is very, very small that is a great advantage. And making it this small size also will allow you to measure the temperature in a very, I mean narrow location, very small location where there no other th sensor can go inside, right. Shape it has a various uh, shape, it can be available in disc, wafers, flakes, as well as in rods. These are the different shape of the thermistor. And resistance of the thermistor may vary from few ohms to several kilo ohms. Usually, I mean, as you know, the thermistor one application, as I told you, that you will find that it has an electronic um, circuits also we use it. Now, resistance of the thermistor may vary from the few ohms to several kilo ohms. Now, one thing you should uh, very careful about the minimum resistance because the as the temperature increases, its resistance drops, its resistance falls. So, it should not fall in such a way that it will make a either it will draw a huge current uh, from the voltage source, okay, from a battery. That means prevention of short circuit should be there. And also it should not load the subsequent instrument because if you have the very low resistance obviously there is a chance of loading the um, subsequent um, signal conditioning circuit that is to be also avoided. Other semiconductor uh, conductor temperature sensors include the carbon resistors, silicon and germanium. These are that some other um, sensors even though which are not much in use. Now silicon with varying amount of boron impurities can have either positive or negative temperature coefficient of resistance. So you can have either positive thermistor or a negative thermistor. We are not interested to have a positive temperature coefficient because we have many other sensors, but we need negative temperature coefficient that also with a very high sensitivity it is available in the case of thermistor. Now, germanium doped with arsenic gallium is used for cryonic temperature when it shows a large decrease in resistance with increase of temperature because it is you know cryotic instrumentation is one of the uh, very important instrumentation, uh, instrumentation especially the measurement of temperature of the liquid helium and all those things. You will find that in such a case because many a times it is necessary to measure all this superconducting uh, circuitry and all these things you have to should measure the temperature. So, the cryogenic temperature measurements is, a, is, is again another challenge. So, in that type of situations I can apply the thermistors and it is a germanium dot with arsenic gallium and it is used for cryogenic temperature where it shows a large decrease in resistance with the increase of temperature. Now, applications in electronic circuits it limits the charge, large charging current for power supply filtering capacitor that will show later on at the end of the lesson that how it can be controlled uh, this. It has an also applications of stabilizing the wind bridge oscillator circuit. It is also used for stabilizing our uh, I mean Q point stability of the our analog amplifier circuits I mean transistorized amplifier circuit. So, all these applications will um, so, later on. Now, please note that uh, in the case of thermistor, if I take a white page, the it is actually available those who are because there are two types is resistance is drawn like this one and in electronic circuits when they are using, they are using uh, making a dot like this one. This is a case of thermistors having dots which is used in a um, electronic circuit. In that type of cases, it is available in the form like this one, okay, disc like. So, two wires are coming out and it is color coded. So that means, it is happening, you see that it looks like this. So, color code is put here so that people will know the, what is the at room temperatures or at some calibrated, particular calibrated temperature, what should be the resistance of the thermistor. Right, resistance is not very constant as you know that because it is sensitive 
even though in the case of suppose a carbon registers when you buy a, when you buy a carbon registers there is a color code on the carbon registers so obviously that color code i mean that value depends i mean value actually refer to some particular room temperatures whereas in the case of thermistor that temperature is very important okay because it is varying a large it will vary large at the increase of temperature so color code is there whereas in the case of thermistor switch is used in as a sensor you will find it is like this one on a glass so it is glass coating so they put a thermistor there right and wire is coming out right if i go back now thermistor is can be used as an active element in wheatstone beach because you know it is a resistance change ultimately the if i want to measure a, at any temperature so what will happen that you have to calibrate the output voltage in terms of temperature if you use the bridge as an unbalanced i mean if you use the bridge in an unbalanced condition so i have to make the that unbalanced voltage should be calibrated in terms of temperature that is actually done in the case of if you use it as a temperature measuring device there are various i mean i mean you can use a uh, voltage to frequency converter and frequency can be calibrated in terms of temperature there are various means people tried with so many alternative they have tried also with an uh, thermistor as a frequency changing elements of the circuits otherwise as you know very standard features that the unbalanced voltage of the piston which can be given to a b2f converter so that you know, the frequency will be directly calibrated can be directly calibrated which can be measured by some frequency measuring devices and that can be calibrated in terms of some uh, frequency measuring circuit that frequency can be calibrated in terms of temperature that is also possible by all this means actually people are doing all these different i mean methods just to increase the resolution to increase the sensitivity even though it is a quite sensitive devices but in some situations where the fraction of the temperature change of measurement is important in that case we have to think of that type of change of uh, frequency with the increase of temperatures and all those things now this is a wish on which we have see uh, you can see this one you see here this is a thermistor so i can put a dot here if i choose a yellow pen so i can put a dot here so it is thermistor others are just simple carbon resistors these are bridge excitations e subscript tx and this is our output voltage now if the initial the bridge is balanced then what will happen suppose all r t r 2 r 3 r 4 all are same all are same then bridge will be obviously balanced at room temperature suppose now suppose there is a temperature change in rt so obviously the resistance value of the rt will change okay so if the resistance value of the rt decreases i will get an unbalanced voltage previously unbalanced voltage is zero now we get some unbalanced voltage that unbalanced voltage can be calibrated in terms of resistance change and that resistance change unbalanced voltage also further can be calibrated in terms of temperature this unbalanced voltage i can feed to a this voltage i can feed to a p to f converter and this a frequency measuring circuit a counter or frequency measuring circuit right what it will do so it will simply do it will measure the frequency and the frequency will be calibrated in terms of temperature degree centigrade the advantage of this type of thing is as i told you earlier the resolution sensor bit also can be increased because i have a signal conditioning circuitry where i can make all all this type of manipulation so that i will get the frequency change more sensitive now if the wheatstone bridge is initially balanced we assume that the wheatstone bridge is initially balanced even not not necessarily that the all the resistance will be equal if this condition values that rt into r3 equal to r2 into r4 then what will happen is you can see if r2 r3 r4 are fixed value resistors then the output voltage e not due to change in resistance delta rt for change in temperature will be derived as follows okay if we redraw let us redraw the wheatstone bridge again so we will find so we have redrawn the circuit so we have labeled something a b c d we have taken in um, in clockwise direction this is rt thermistor then r2 
carbon resistors, R3 fixed resistors. So, I should rather say that the, these resistors R2, R3, R4 is temperature independent. That means, if the temperature varies, this resistance, its re, their resistance does not do not change. Fine, we can accept that thing. Now, EAB, you can simply see that it will be equal to RT upon RT plus R2 multiplied by EEX because this is our excitation, is not it? This is our excitation voltage. Then EAD will be equal to R4 upon R3 plus R4 multiplied by EEX, where EX is the excitation, right? Now the output voltage E0 equal to EBD equal to EAB minus EAD equal to RT upon RT plus R2 minus R4 upon R3 plus R4 multiplied by EEX. Right? So, again with this now, so this is our E0, so this is our E0 equal to this voltage, fine, no problem. Due to change in temperature, the new value of the resistance is RT, it is no more RT, so it is RT plus delta RT. Whether delta will be positive, negative, that way I am not thinking, that we will discuss later on. There is a change, and we say that the RT plus it is delta RT. If it is there, then you see that I can write that E naught, a new value of RT, let me take this one, uh, RT plus delta RT because it is a new value of RT. Okay? What is this new value? This is due to temperature change, RT is replaced by RT plus delta RT in these equations. So, RT plus delta RT, R2, R4 upon R3 plus R4 multiplied by the excitation EX. If I make all these cross multiplications, I will get in the denominator, I will get the RT plus delta RT, R2, R3 plus R4. Numerator, I will get RT, R3 plus delta RT, R3 plus RT, R4 plus R4 delta RT minus R4 RT minus R4 delta RT minus R2 R4. Now, interestingly you see that what will happen that here uh, this will cancel out obviously, if I take out it will be easier. You see that this and this will cancel out RT, RT R4, this and this will cancel out, is not it? Then R4 delta RT and R4 delta RT also you cancel out. Now RT R3 according to the conditions, this and this will cancel out, is not it? So if I look at, so what will remain? It will remain delta RT into R3. So this is the only factor which will remain in the numerator upon RT plus delta RT plus R2 multiplied by R3 plus R4. Right, because the condition is R T R three equal to R two R four. That is, is in the first term and the last term was cancelled out. So ultimately, I will get the expressions E naught upon excitation E X will be delta R T into R three, R T plus delta R T plus R two mul whole multiplied by R three plus R four. Now assume that the if R2 equal to R3 and R3 equal to R4, the equation 1 becomes, you see RT, delta RT by RT, I mean upon 1 plus delta RT by RT plus R2 by RT, 1 plus RT by R2. If you just in the numerator it will remain same, it will remain same in the numerator. So, in the denominator if I multiply, a 2 will come because you see here this R2 RT and RT R2 if you multiply will get another one. So, this will make 2 then RT plus by R2, R2 by RT plus delta RT by RT plus delta RT by R2, this is equation number 2, right. So, finally, I will get an equation. For the thermistors, 
you see the interesting thing is that in the in the last equation equation number 2 that the terms delta t by r t and delta t by r 2 is the in the denominator are not small enough with respect to the other real term therefore, they cannot be neglected to simplify the solution of the equation for delta t by r t. For special case of an equal bridge r t equal to r 2 equal to r 3 equal to r 4 rearranging equation 2 we get e naught by e x equal to delta r t by r t upon 2 plus r t by r 2 r 2 by r t plus delta r t by r t delta r t by r 2. If you do this thing, so ultimately I will get because if the r t equal to r 2 we have assumed already. So, I will get an expression we have assumed that the r 2 equal to r 3 and r t equal to r 4. So, I will get an expression which looks like we have assumed r 2 r r t r 2 r 3 r 4 are all same. So, I will get an expression like this one. So, this will lead to delta r t by r t 4 plus 2 multiplied by delta r t by r t right. So, if I uh, make a little algebraic manipulation. So, this will be actually this will be minus sign bigger minus sign should be there 4 e naught by e x 2 delta r t by r t minus e naught by e x equal to delta r t by r t right. So, delta r t by r 2 1 minus 2 e naught by e x equal to 4 e naught by e x. So, delta r t by r t equal to 4 e naught by e x 1 minus 2 e naught by e x equation 3. Now, the thermistor resistance r t at any temperature t is then given by the simple expression actually this is wrong mistyped. So, this will be equal right this will be equal sign that means r t dash equal to r t plus delta r t right. So, I can write that if I take r t common, so r t 1 plus delta r t by r t. So, this is equation number 4, substitute equation 3 in equation 4 we get r t dash equal to r t 1 plus 2 e naught by e x 1 minus 2 e naught by e x this is equation number 5 right. And the value of r t obtained from the equation 5 is converted to a temperature by using tables that list as a function of r t for the specific thermistor being used right. So, we will get a table. So, we can find it we can make a calibrated and as you know in ROM and we can make a calibrated ROM for also this type of purpose. So, the ROM is advantage is that all those linearity problem non linearity problem can be easily eliminated in the case of thermistor ok. Even though it is a excellent devices very sensitive very small in size. I mean you can it can make can be used for the dynamic temperature measurement everything is there, but the problem is that nonlinearity. even though thermocouple is also nonlinear, but the advantage of the thermocouple for a short range you can consider as a <laughs> linear sense I am sorry. Now, thermistor also can be used in a potentiometer circuit right. You see there are various potentiometer circuit so, used in the potentiometer circuit as follows. You see this is one of the thermistors which is used in a potentiometer circuit right. Uh, you see here that um, this this should be the sign. So, this is the thermistor R t and R 1. In this case if R t equal to R 1, so R t dash it will be equal to R t that means change resistance where R t dash as I told you earlier equal to R t plus delta R t. R t dash equal to R t 1 minus 2 e naught by E x excitation upon 1 plus 2 e naught by E x. Now, interestingly one common question arises is what will happen if I flip it that means if I put R t here and R 1 
here that means the circuit if the circuit looks like this then what will happen if I take a white page that means suppose I have an excitation okay let me take first erase this one that means if I take a that means actually our circuit we got that like this one is not it thermistor here RT we have connected here this excitation EX I am connecting this output voltage this is R1 right instead what will happen if I make the circuit like this one R1 I will put the thermistor here you remember in the previous some um, sort of back I mean we have discussed a, the instrumentation engineers must consider the uh, loading effect or the of the thermistor in case of temperature why it is not used you see like this one is not it here now what will happen if the temperature rises if the temperature rises you see the the thing will happen this resistance will fall and fall right so the impedance of this resistance of the impedance from looking from this side will be different right in some cases it will some value in some other cases so it will make the problem the subsequent signal conditioning circuit that means if you have a signal conditioning circuitry here so that will designing that type of circuit will be different whereas if you make the circuit like this one you see the I will get a some impedance R1 always same right. So that is the reason instead of connecting like that I put the thermistor here. So this circuit should not be used so we should use this circuit what will happen if the temperature changes this resistance will fall and we will get more current through this um, resistance which is in series and I will take the output voltage so out, obviously output voltage also will increase because if the current is I I1 suppose so I will take the current E0 equal to I1 by R1 if R1 increases R1 decreases obviously sorry if the I1 increases because if the resistance falls if the resistance falls obviously I1 will increase this value will I mean value of the voltage will increase so as the temperature increases the E0 will increase right because this current will increase because this has fallen down right so that is the reason we got the expression RT dash equal to RT 1 minus 2 E0 upon EX excitation 1 plus 2 E0 by EX right this is one of the circuit some other circuits to improve the uh, linearity of operations are as follows you see some of the circuits we have shown uh, these are various circuits to influence the impedance output impedance and all those things these are the circuits which we'll discuss this is a thermistor here instead of they are put in a circle instead of putting a dot they are put a circle like this one and this is another circuit so far the thermistor as if increase the temperatures I mean uh, I'm sensing devices we have seen that we can also prove analytically that um, whether you use it in a, in a bridge or in a potentiometer its sensitivity resolution does not I mean vary much okay it does not vary at all but however you will find that if I increase if you use a sensor like this one I mean if you use a uh, suppose a circuit like this one I will get always some advantages I will show you what is the advantages this is another circuits of the thermistor which is used in a bridge circuit you see here mm -hmm. there is typical reason why we have connected a resistance in parallel with the thermistor now as I told you thermistor non-linear devices so linearity is a great problem with the thermistor so what they are doing they always this is a common thumb rule that you use a resistance in parallel with the thermistor right so what will happen you see so I have a thermistor any circuit we have seen two circuits one is a, a circuit like this one 
right. So, this is a thermistor and like this one we have seen, right. I can take the output voltage from this position or we have seen a bridge circuit. Excuse me. So, we put a bridge, we put a resistor here, right. So, this is RT. So, I put a resistor in parallel. This is R2, R3, R4. Clear? Now, any resistance, if I take a new page. Whenever you are connecting a resistance to a thermistor, so you know what will in parallel to thermistor, you know what will happen with characteristics. Suppose I have a characteristics like this one, temperature versus resistance characteristics of a thermistor, it looks like this, okay. depends on the value of beta, how sharp it will come down. Okay. As I told you in the beginnings that the higher the value of beta more sharper and sharper will be the fall that more and more will be the sensitivity of the thermistor. Always we want the sensitivity should be more. Now, if you connect a resistor in parallel with the thermistor, you will lose first of all sensitivity. And if you lose the sensitivity, it will look like this one, you see, it will look like for some small range, I can use that thermistor almost as a linear devices. If I use a thermistor with resistance in parallel. So, it will not be a fully linear, it is not possible because it is already a nonlinear devices. Okay. So, it is exponential fall, but if you use a resistance in parallel for a small range, it will become linear. So, by sacrificing the sensitivity, I am making the circuit or thermistor linear. This is my circuit as we discussed. Now, when the uh, when thermistors are used to measure the temperature, the errors re resulting from the lead wires effect are usually small enough to be neglected even for a relatively long lead wires. Now, this is the typical problem of any uh, temperature sensitive uh, devices when you are making a temperature sensitive uh, sensor, temperature sensitive sensor, this is a typical problem because the I mean uh, resistance of the lead wires because you see that you cannot I mean put uh, suppose I have a you cannot put like this one that means suppose I have a what I am saying suppose I have a uh, suppose I have a furnace here. Okay. You, you cannot put a, a thermistor might be inside, you cannot put the I mean uh, you cannot put inside the very near to this meter. So, you have to take out suppose I have a furnace here, so you have to take out the wires and might be here we have the meter, okay. here of the sensor suppose these sensors inside, so these are the lead wires. It can be few meters also, right. It can be few meters, it is all temperature measuring whether it is thermocouple, thermistor, and um, uh, thermo, I mean, or RTD it does not matter. So, this lead wire creates the problem. Now, actually, lead wires is not very critical in the case of uh, in the case of thermistor because of the reason that the thermistor resistance value is quite high compared to the lead wire resistance. Because there are many problems, suppose there is a temperature change along the lead wire, so obviously, your lead, I mean, total resistance. Because if you look at the meter, meter from this side, what it will see? It will see that the total resistance, it will not care, it will not, it will not see only the lead, only the thermistor resistance. It will also look at the lead wire resistance plus thermistor resistance. So, the lead wire temperature variation is very important in instrumentation, right. So, it is not important in the case of thermistor because of its typical value, its value is high, but it is very important in the case of the, in the case of RTD. We'll see that in the latter, I mean lesson, right. And even though for a, so you will see that when the thermistors are used to measure the temperature errors resulting from the lead wires effect are usually small enough 
to be neglected even for relatively long uh, lead wires, can be few meters also lead wires. The sensitivity of a thermistor is high therefore, the change in resistance delta T resulting from a temperature change is much greater than the small change in resistance of the lead wires due to the temperature variation, this is very important right. That is the reason we can have a long lead wires in the case of thermistor. Also the resistance of the thermistor is large compared to lead wires resistance which already I discussed this thing can be reached typically can be RT by RL can be 1000. Consequently any reduction in sensitivity of the sensor due to the lead wire resistance is negligible right. Now there is another problem with the uh, thermistor it is called self heating error. Any resistance devices whenever you are using uh, the self heating error it is common to both the thermistor as well as RTD right. This cannot be avoided. This is a, a physical phenomena. You can avoid the lead wire problem, okay, but you cannot avoid. I mean the self heating error. Errors may occur due to the self heating of the thermistor. Recommended practice is to limit the current flow through the thermistor to a value such that the temperature rise due to the I square R T power dissipation is smaller than the precision to which the temperature is to be measured. Okay. So, actually the precision will tell you how much current you will pass through the thermistor right. So, sensitivity and precision if you look at very careful that is going side by side. So, let us look at. Now suppose that RT that means resistance of a thermistor is 5 kilo ohm is capable of dissipating a power of 1 milliwatt per degree centigrade above the ambient temperature right. So thus if the temperature is to be determined with an accuracy of 0 0.5 degree centigrade the power to be dissipated should be limited to less than 0 0.5 milliwatt right. This limitation establishes a maximum value of the current. What is that maximum value? We will show this. So, you see that the maximum value of current which will pass through the thermistor can be P by RT equal to 316 micro ohm, micro ampere. This will actually lead you to choose your big excitation or the potentiometer value, I mean value of the potentiometer excitation or the value of the Bistron big excitation. Right, because you can calculate how much the maximum current will be allowed and accordingly. But please remember if you do that thing obviously you will lose the overall sensitivity of the system because your output voltage also will be getting reduced it is not it we are not measuring the resistance there we are measuring the output voltage. So, output voltage will be reduced. So, adequate response can be obtained even at these low currents because the sensitivity is high. So, sensitivity is high I can make that equation response, but this is a typical problem that sensitivity that is advantage because, but obviously what will happen if you reduce if you I mean think of this in limitations obviously you have to sacrifice some amount of sensitivity that is quite obvious that you cannot avoid. And I am sorry it is not thank you. So, I mean let me go I mean look at some of the circuits. <coughs> uh, for which thermistor is used. As you know the wind bridge circuits is a typical circuit looks like this. You see the wind bridge circuit looks like this. very familiar it is a standard I mean circuit for making commercial oscillators ok. So, basically wind bridge oscillators now there is R 3 R 4 like this one. So, these two voltage are coming to the uh, 
an op m <coughs> i'll show you some of the other applications of the thermistor this is the wind bj oscillator circuit right this wind bj oscillators now see that always we uh, will try to make the, uh, the gain of this amplifier very high to to oscillate, we will always make this gain of the amplifier quite high. Now there are some resistance, suppose this is R, this should be R, if it is C, this should be also C. There is no doubt about that thing and the frequency of oscillation, so omega naught will be equal to 1 by RC, right. Now there are two resistance you see R3 and R4. Now, I am not going to details of this wind which oscillator, but you see that for stability of the system, the gain should not be that high that it should saturate the amplifier, it should not be that low also that the your oscillation may not start. So, what they do commercially, they use either previously they use R4 as a, a tungsten filament lamp, because as you know the tungsten filament lamp, it, uh, its resistance depends on the temperature. So, as the current as the time goes on its resistance increases or you can use R3 as a thermistor. If you use R3 as a thermistor what will happen as the time goes by the current will start to pass through this one and its resistance value will decrease. So, that will control the amount of feedback you are giving to this oscillator. So, instead of tungsten lab I can use this, um, this type of thermistor for making a temperature for making a stabilization of the wind bridge oscillator. This is one application. In other applications as you know that uh, we make usually that our power supply is not it. So, typically power supply looks like this all instrument needs the power supply. right. So, I am giving a supply here right. this is our AC supply after stepping down and all this is a full of rectifier. So, I am getting a DC here positive this side negative this side this is AC this side. Now, any uh, fluid rectification as you know that you see that our is not a DC it is a full F. So, I must smoothen it because the pure DC should have a suppose this is the time and this is the amplitude. So, this is the battery voltage E. So, it should be like this one right. Now, what they do a commercially they put a capacitor a large value of capacitors right. Now, even for a suppose uh, the 1 ampere power supply 1 ampere suppose 25 volt power supply. So, this around suppose 2500 microfarad or 3000 microfarad this is a typical value for the power supply ok. According to the voltage whatever the voltage across the voltage suppose if it is plus minus 25 volt power supply I will change a 50 volt power supply like this one right. Now, the problem arises you see that when you switch on, now what will happen here? You see if I look at now what will happen you see the now my output voltage suppose this is output voltage right output voltage will look like a slight fall then again it will rise like this one right fall like because before the capacitor fully discharges I mean charges again it will fall like this one the output voltage will charging and discharging of the capacitor it will look like this one almost steady DC voltage. The best filter for this power line filter 
is a bisection filter. That means you use a like this one, right? But L is not no more used because L has a lot of problems associated problems, magnetic field, and it's costly, it's bulky. So to avoid that, people use a simple capacitor of so higher and higher value. So in this case, suppose if you use a 1000 microfarad capacitor, 1000 microfarad capacitor, okay, then we should have a one. Suppose this is a 0.1 or Henry or like this one. So this will be give you a very good. But this is not used. You use a very high value of the capacitance, 2500 microfarad or 3000 microfarad capacitor value. Now in this case, you know what will happen. You see that that initially when you switch on the system, when you switch on the system, so you will find there is a large current is necessary to charge this capacitor because you cannot connect the capacitor like this one. There should be some bleeding resistors and all these things here, high value bleeding resistors. So this is always necessary because otherwise capacitor will fully charge, right. So what the people do, you know, because what will happen that if I charge this I mean capacitor with a large current because if it is totally I mean discharge capacitors it needs a large current. Then what will happen? This there is a large surge current to the diode. So diode will burn out right. To limit this what we have to do what we can do actually we can put a small value of thermistor in this position right. If I take a new page. I take a new page, it will look like this one. So, I will put diode as before. Okay. So, put a now put a capacitor there, small value of the thermistor. I mean, AC. Now initially what they do you see it will it will offer high resistance this thermistor and capacitor will charge and capacitor will slowly charge because at this time what will happen that the, since it is high resistance it will not charge fully. Then after some time what will happen you see that as the time goes on this its resistance is as the temperature goes because the current will pass there will be self fitting. So, what will happen to this resistance? This value decreases that I want actually because it is a wastage, it is a loss of power, this will never be utilized. So, the efficiency of your power supply will be deteriorated just to protect four diodes because a semiconductor device, you can say, sir, I will use some fuse here. A semiconductor device is to be protected by another semiconductor device, please note that, right. So, you cannot do that thing. So, I have to use, so if I use this one. So, it will offer a large resistance. So, slowly it will start to charge and at the time goes by this temperature resistance will increase, resistance will decrease sorry temperature as a current passes resistance will decrease because the temperature is rising and I will get full the loss within this thermistor also will be reduced because there is no utility of because this is a total loss because this voltage will be so, this is the typical circuits also used in SMPS also because in SMPS also you know the switch mode power supply for regulated power supply uh, for uh, all the for giving the power to all the chips also they do not they need some power supply even though there is a switch mode supply but uh, for that reason they use a small series regulator. So, in those series regulator I have a need diode rectifier like this one and which will utilize the thermistor. Thermistor is also used in the electronic circuits also for I mean for stabilization. You know the Q point stability is very important in the uh, devices. Now once you switch on especially the circuit where there is a feedback there is a chance of oscillation. So what they do they purposefully put a thermistor there and this will limit the current and this is a typical uh, circuit I can show you. You see here. I have a you see this the current is going 
there is a push pull circuit which is utilized for for making amplifiers okay right so i am taking a load from this position okay and output so i am giving a power supply of 25 volt here suppose now what they do actually so i have subsequent circuits like this one so there is a dc circuit dc circuit so this circuit is coming here this circuit is coming coming to the collector like this one like this one see this is used as a thermistor right so this can be do like this one so there is a some resistance we can come here also through a capacitor so this 25 volt can be connected here so in fact this is a 25 volt should come here so 25 volt sorry 25 volt should come here okay so this signal is this is a typically a, uh, amplifier so where the signal will come here in this from these directions right it will go down there now see the reason for uh, there is also here connection here the reason for this type of circuits is that this, uh, this q point stability right so i need a stability of the thermistor this is another application of the thermistors in the electronic circuits right so it will make the q point stable because due to the resistance in all these things it may happen that it will go out so to uh, to because there is a feedback there so actually there is a feedback so it should go like this one and it should go so initially so it that may go to the oscillatory region so to stabilize this thing so use a thermistor and this ends the lesson 7 of industrial instrumentation